Hello and welcome to Cutting Words. I'm Brad Thompson and today Vecna Evil Ruin is out for those that pre-ordered it. It was out two weeks early uh, and I did pre-order it so now we can take a look and see what's within this tome. This new adventure, the last adventure for this version of Dungeons and Dragons uh, for the new player's handbook is coming out later this year. Um, we're going to take a look at the magic items within this adventure today. Uh, so we get up the magic items, see what new items are in store for us. Um, be warned, spoilers ahead if you're planning on playing this adventure. Uh, definitely a lot of magic items are in this book. The new are uh, very plot specific and do contain some spoilers there. So you're being warned. All right, let's get up and take a look. So there is no uh, index or appendix or anything like that containing the magic items in this book. They're all kind of scattered throughout the book. Uh, most of them are in the first uh, kind of lead in explain the storyline chapter of the book um so there's no actual magic items section i can just show you so fortunately in dd beyond you can search up all magic items in vecna evil ruin you can put the filters up vecna evil ruin and i've got uh these magic items come up here um so we'll look at the new ones there's a few ones that are just reprints of existing ones so let's look at the new magic items uh not too many look at that uh one two three four five six seven eight nine total items some uh reprints though all right, so first up we have Chime of Exile. A very rare magic item. Let's get the artwork up there. Got some art. Yep, that's a Chime, all right. And uh, this wondrous item, very rare. No achievement required. The Silver Chime is engraved with delicate magic sigils. While holding the Chime, you can use an action to cast the Banishment spell. Spell save DC 20. It's a pretty high DC. Good luck passing that one. Uh, if you target the spell, has 50 hit points or fewer. It automatically fails at saving throw. Once the chime is being used to cast a spell, it can't be used this way again until the next dawn. That's pretty good. That's pretty good because um, it just uh, no attunement, just free high DC spell. Just you're removed. You're gone. And if you're low in hit points, you're just gone. No save. Uh, though if you hit points, you probably could have killed them at that point. But um, it possibly could be useful for some kind of plot relevancy. Uh, if it's just a just a throwaway magic item. The place is getting can use all the time. That's very, very strong. Chime of Exile. I've not read the whole adventure yet. I've read the first kind of adventure summary, but um, I'll be reading uh, between videos the rest of the book as we put out more videos covering it. All right, Crown Lies. So this is a huge um, plot item here for the adventure. So definitely, definitely, if you are playing on Players Adventure, stop. Just stop because this kind of gives a lot away. This artifact, this crown of lies. Looks pretty cool. It's a big old, big old crown with spikes and glowy gems and things. It's pretty cool. Pretty cool looking item. Now, crown of lies. Spins out as a wondrous item artifact. Requires achievement. Um, so this is a huge plot item. After, so the write-up goes, here's the bit of lore behind it. There's an artifact. You got lore and they got a whole bunch of uh, magical properties and whatnot. Um, Artifacts, I believe, also work on into magic zones, things like that. They're they're pretty like, huge plot items. Artifacts. All right. Uh, after betraying and nearly destroying the Lich Vecna, the warrior Cass, um, which I don't know if you know about. Uh, we'll, we'll we'll talk more about the venture itself proper. We'll go into the history of Vecna and Cass, the, the legendary history there. A uh, big plot to the game. Um, the warrior Cass found himself trapped in the Shadowfell, imprisoned in the domain of dread called Tovarg. There, he languished as a vampire. In time, the dark powers of the Dwayne of Dread lured Cass to a hidden forge where he found a crown of lies. Once Cass vowed to deliver Vecna into the dark powers' clutches and donned the crown, the dark powers released Cass. From there, Cass set out to ruin his former master. Should Cass fail, the dark powers will reclaim him. The crown is, the crown is made of burnished and intertwined uh, metal rods. The, to attune to it, you must place it on your head and speak a true desire of your heart. You know how to attune to the crown when you touch it. Random properties. The crown of lies is the following random properties. Uh, see Dungeon Master's Guide for options. So Dungeon Master's Guide for artifacts. Has a bunch of tables of different various uh, beneficial and um, detrimental properties you can assign to artifacts. And so this one has one minor beneficial property, one major beneficial property, and one minor detrimental, detrimental property. So not too bad, actually. It's only got... It's got Two good things and one little bad thing. Uh, perfect disguise. While tuned to the crown, 
you can use an action to transform yourself to look and feel like any creature you've seen at least once and whose size is no more than one size smaller or larger than yours. The new form mimics the chosen creature's appearance exactly, including its voice. Your size and speed is, are replaced by the chosen creatures who otherwise retain your own game statistics. While in this new form, the crown melds into your person and is undetectable. Undetachable, should I say. Not undetectable, undetectable. Uh, your new form lasts until you die, your attunement to the crown ends, or you use another action to transform into a different creature or your true form. Interactions uh, with you while you're transformed by the crown reveal no illusionary magic, nor do they reveal anything other than details about the creature you're disguised as. You count as a chosen creature for the purposes of spells, traps, and other defenses that wouldn't target the chosen creature. While you are disguised, while well, in your disguised form, any lies you tell always seem to be true, no matter what magical or mundane methods are used to try to detect your falsehoods. You are the recipient of sending spells addressed to you and the creature you're disguised as, and are scrying and scrying similar spells that target the creature you are disguised as actually target you. The only way to reveal your true nature while transformed by the crown is with a wish spell. While we're in the crown, in the true form. In your true form, you can choose for the crown to be visible if you wish. Destroying the crown. If a creature wearing the crown is killed by the creature is disguised as the crown disintegrates and is destroyed. So that's a big plot McGuffin there. Uh, basically means pretty strong. Like man, players ever get this. Um, basically you can perfectly impersonate anyone and no one can ever detect anything after using a wish. Um, it's crazy strong, like man. Um, obviously it's a rare artifact, like one of a kind legendary thing that, you know, basically impossible to get um but um just its existence is quite terrifying you could cause a lot of havoc um and damage with this crown um obviously it's used specifically for the plot um so Cass who has the crown can be any NPC and you'll never know the players can't even like natural 20 insight can't tell um but I don't love I don't love like it has kind of removed every option of um players being able to detect basically see what wish there's kind of like the kind of feels all rail railroady there like basically they're they're forced to um never about figure it out until cast decides to reveal himself or something um so i don't love that aspect of it it's uh crazy good but yeah seems a little, little lazy writing wise all right crown of lies uh we've got dokent i've sent Wondrous item rare, requires attunement by a Warforge. Oh, this is actually from Wayfarer's Guide to Eberron. This is not even new. Oh, I thought it was. So, um, it's from the Eberron book. It's a magic item for Warforges to use. It's sentient. Anyone can repair them. Get extra spells and abilities and things like that. All right, we'll skip past that because it is not new. Drift Globe is, an, is a, another classic one uh, from Dungeon Master's Guide. It makes a light spell and daylight spell. And no achievement is floating around line things up was useful it looks for health is another dungeon master's guide one that you know fixes a bunch of conditions uh eye hand of Vecna is actually was in the book yay uh i'll be shocked if it wasn't in the book um but this artifact is uh in dungeon master's guide so it's not new it's huge right up there it's always been around so we won't cover it today rod of seven parts here we go so this is um the begin the uh this rod is big central plot item here here it is the complete rod now uh rod quarter star artifact requires attunement it's no artifact eons ago a war between the primordials and the gods scarred the planes of existence a demon lord named uh, miska the wolf spider and here's a stat block for miska we'll cover in uh when we cover the monster stat blocks in the book in a different video uh eventually so miska also eventually pushed the primordial enemies to the brink of annihilation despite uh desperate to save themselves and their allies powerful army tools beings called the wind dukes of aqua uh rose against miska uh committed to the concept of law the wind dukes descended from a people called the vati who once ruled many worlds should we be capitalized vati? anyway Seven dukes, seven wind dukes wove their power into an artifact called the Rod of Law. The dukes used the Rod of uh, Rod to imprison Miska on the plane of Pandemonium. As a result, the Rod shattered into seven parts that were scattered throughout the multiverse. 
the rod thus became known as a rod of seven parts. Possessing the broken rod, uh, you, the rod can't be attuned to while it's broken. While holding one piece of the broken rod, you know the general location of the next consecutive piece, as the rod yearns to be complete, be a complete artifact. Multiple rod pieces can be assembled into one piece or disassembled again, each requiring an action, although a partially complete rod doesn't gain any other abilities. Additionally, while holding one piece of the broken rod, you can use an action to cast a spell associated with that piece, as listed in the rod, rod pieces table. Once that piece of the rod has been used to cast a spell, it can be used this way again until the next dawn. So each rod piece is just a non unattuned, just no attunement required um, magic item that can cast one spell a day. Um, and those spells are, so the first piece can cast a commune spell, which is pretty good. Phone a god, or phone, phone someone, ask a question. It's pretty good. Um, second, I really, I really like that. Give him a commune. Uh, second is Arcane Gate. You can, uh, oh, you create a portal. You can, type, I don't know, you can basically create a permanent gateway, well, 10 minute gateway that you can find a free way that you can kind of move between two points. You can, now you're playing with portals. A uh, very niche spell. People don't often take it, so it's quite nice having a magic item. So, for rare times, it might come up. Oh, actually, we're good to connect these two points. Uh, that would be quite cool. I can see uh, definitely building some cool battle maps. And um, so players can make portals between two places on there. That'd be quite cool. Third, Reverse Gravity, TC18. Um, all right. Uh, these these guys here, they're out of the fight. Um, so Reverse Gravity is a pretty strong spell. It's a level level seven spell. Um, it creates the area where the gravity is reversed and everyone just kind of falls to the ceiling. And you can end the spell and then they all splatter the ground or whatever you. Uh, it's pretty good. Um, it's not bad on item. The often reverse gravity I find um, when I have access to seven level spells in, play, in game, like reverse gravity is good, but often I'm, I end up, ta I end up taking other spells doesn't quite get there for me. So I have such few options. So having it as a magic item is quite nice. Uh, fourth, we've got regenerate. Um, you know, full, so you can heal. Yeah, get some ongoing healing, and I think it regrows yeah body parts and things. So very niche spell. Um, you know. You go in your back pocket in case it comes up. Um, in case someone chops their hand off, I guess it's to go on having this hand or something. You can grow it back later when you change your mind. You realize that's a bad idea, that is. Uh, the fifth piece is Find the Path. Uh, I think, it, isn't it a famously terrible spell? Uh, level six, you know, it can guide you to uh, the, the optimal pathway to a place you've been to before. All right, then. So, very niche spell, that one. Uh, six. Mirage Arcane, just, it's a uh, great, that's saying 10 minutes, so you to hold this piece for 10 minutes. You create a whole illusionary area, and it lasts 10 days. Create a whole area, make it look, look different. Um, I don't see that coming up too often. It needs to run around in this campaign, but well, there we go. And seventh is Simulacrum, which is amazing. Um, I definitely don't like it when players bunch of some simulacrums uh, so people can pass that around suddenly yeah when players get the seventh piece so basically every player character can now have a simulacrum copy of themselves so the party is just doubled in size uh i don't don't love that don't love that at all that seems very broken um great awesome so everyone gets get simulacrum now perfect possessing the whole rod uh once all seven pieces are reassembled a creature can attune to the rod of seven parts, or attune to the rod, you gain the following benefits. Uh, magic weapon, the rod of seven parts functions for you as a magic quarterstaff that grants plus three bonus to attack and damage rolls made with it. Uh, Alright, so plus three quarterstaff. Woohoo! Uh, rod spellcasting, the rod of seven parts has seven charges and regains 1d4 plus three expend charges daily at dawn. While holding the rod, you can use an action to expend one charge and cast any of the spells in the rod pieces table. You can use also use an action to cast to even good from the rod without any using any charges. Ultimate law: If you're not of a lawful alignment, you find your worldview shifting toward keeping a personal code. Uh, you are more apt to keep your promises, follow through on your declarations, and adhere to your beliefs. Destroying the rod: The only way to destroy the rod in parts is to immerse the, the assembled rod in lava in the abyss. Must remain in the lava for 50 years before it finally is consumed. A piece of the rod may be temporarily destroyed in this way, but every piece reforms one year after it has succumbed. A uh, reformed piece teleports to a random place in the multiverse. Professional cool stuff. Uh, yeah. See, it's about, about professional cool stuff or not. 
All right. Um, so I think the Rosin Hearts is actually stronger. It's just got the seventh piece and just pass it around your your friends each day and just create clones every one, basically magical co copies every one. Uh, everyone gets a copy. Um, that seems way stronger than the fully assembled Rod of Seven Parts when you got hit the tune to it and it kills all these ultimate lore things and you got um, all this other stuff. It's actually stronger just as, as using the seventh piece and passing it around. It's hilarious. <laughs> uh, interesting design. Anyway, that's the Rod of Seven Parts, the mythical item there. That's a key piece of the adventure. Soul Coin, uh, this is from Descent into Avernus. Um, it's basically used as a currency in hell uh, for when players venture around there. And Sword of Cass, well, it's um, Cass, uh, Vecna's arch enemy, uh, the vampire. He used the sword to slay Vecna originally. Didn't didn't stick though. Um, and so this is a artifact in the Dungeon Master's Guide that you can potentially get. And that is the adventure. So, well, the magic items in the adventure. So we've got the Chime of Exile, Crown of Lies, and the Rod of Seven Parts. So three original magic items in the adventure. All the rest are from other books. Um, and there'll be no doubt to be other magic items that aren't listed in the search because they were just key items from Dungeon Master's Guide. I imagine there's more items, magic items in the adventure being a high level 10 to 20 adventure. And I imagine there's more magic items scattered about. Um, but yeah, the ones in the book, um, of relevance, uh, those ones. So, yeah. Um, not many major items in this one. Um, maybe we've been spoiled lately, because there have been definitely more in other books, I feel. But only the three ones. I guess they were pretty cramped, chock, chock block for space. As, uh, yeah, the book's pretty jam-packed with stuff. Which we'll get into in my next video. Woo! So watch out for that. All right. Uh, so if you haven't already, like and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on these videos. Pop out on the regular. Got a lot of Vecna content coming out real soon as we go through Eve of Ruin. So uh, make sure you like and subscribe. Catch all those videos as they come out. All right. I'm Red Thompson. This has been Cutting Words. Happy gaming and see ya.